Hey guys, it's Joanna. It has been a while since I've made a video. Hopefully before I post this one, I will have already posted my updated evening routine video just because I filmed that months ago before COVID-19 really became a thing in, in North America anyway. Um, anyway, I haven't even looked at that footage, so hopefully it was okay and I have edited it and since posted it. But Nevertheless, we are here today because I have been posting on my Instagram about how I uh, have been making a ton of bread lately and what spurred this originally was just because it was more difficult to find good quality bread in the grocery stores for like just a brief like week or so. Now it's very easy to find but because this bread is so easy to make and so good I have just been making it non-stop and it is following the no need bread recipe that comes from the New York Times circa like 2006 or something. I am able to make this bread super easily with very minimal work. It is like, like the title suggests, no need bread. And it's just, it goes so well with everything that I think there's really no reason to not make your own bread, particularly again, just given how easy it is and the fact that this bread comes out with no preservatives, you know, nothing that would uh, potentially be in your store-bought breads. All you need are flour, salt, a little bit of yeast, active yeast or instant yeast, and water. And that is literally the only four things that you need in this recipe. You can add to it. I read uh, people have added things like olives, etc. But you know, just plain old white country bread is just so delicious. White crusty country bread, so good. The other thing that makes this recipe just a bit easier to do and very a little bit more consistent is if you have a scale. If you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. I've made this recipe just kind of roughly eyeballing things too and it's been okay. It hasn't been the best, but it's been okay. So the main thing with the scale is that you wanna measure out your flour. It is roughly three cups of flour, but because you know flour can be packed really densely if you scoop it directly from the bag, etc. That's why some you know three cups for me might not be the same as three cups for you, etc. So I think the way that the recommendation of how you actually measure flour if you don't have a scale is you spoon it in so that you never get that really dense packed situation. However, I have a scale, so I'm going to use it. And when it's scaled, it is actually 430 grams of flour. Okay. So I have just a big mixing bowl. Get my flour out. And because I don't really have to worry about it because I have my scale here, I'm just gonna liberally scoop and drop that in here until it gets to 430 grams. We're at 433, that's good enough. Again, if you don't have a scale, it's fine. Three cups, use a spoon to measure your cup so that you don't get it super densely packed. Um, and that's roughly good. So now that the flour is in, I'm also gonna pop in just a quarter teaspoon of salt. Uh, and then with, when it comes to the yeast, you can actually, I've read that you can just directly put this into the mixture, like the dry form, and this is instant, or this is, active yeast, Red Star active yeast. And I believe the difference between active yeast and instant yeast is that active yeast you actually have to active, like make instant by putting it into warm water first. Uh, I have read however that in this recipe because you let it sit for so long that you actually don't need to do that and you can just directly put this dry yeast in here. But I think it actually works better if I put this into some warm water and you do need water for this recipe anyway. So quarter teaspoon of the yeast into a cup and a half of water. Stir it up. Okay, so that looks sufficiently mixed. And now you just pour this into your flour and salt mixture. And start mixing this up. All right, so you mix that for like a minute or so and it ends up turning like this. Don't worry about looking all pretty. There's nothing else that you need to do at this stage except for cover it and wait 12 to 18 hours. 
And my bowl obviously comes with a lid, but you can just cover it with plastic wrap. And just let this now sit out on your counter for 12 to 18 hours. And with that, we will be back 12 to 18 hours later. See you soon. And we're back. It has actually been 24 hours, so a lot longer than the 12 to 18 hours I mentioned yesterday, but totally fine. We're, we're just That just means we have uh, dough that's been able to rest and work proof itself a little longer. Um, unfortunately, I actually have filmed this whole entire part already using my... I thought I had this camera turned on, but unfortunately I did not have it turned on, so all of this upcoming footage is going to be through the lens of my little iPhone to the side here. Sorry about that, but basically, so it is with an amateur YouTuber. <laughs> uh, as you can see, the dough has definitely like more than doubled in size, I think, since where we left it off yesterday. And that's just perfect. When it's like this, you can see the top gets to be very bubbly and it just looks like there's been a lot of activity in here. Take some flour. I'm actually using one of these um, silicone mats like i have a little silpat knockoff from amazon basics so you can if you have a silpat that's great you can just use your cutting board or whatever any kind of surface really i like these because obviously it's designed to be more non-stick um so you know use whatever you think is is good but it's definitely not a necessary piece of this um put some flour on the surface that you're going to work on so that the dough doesn't get all sticky also good to just have a lot of flour on your hands as well. This is probably a lot more flour than you need, but I just want to be safe for our little demo here. Uh, dump this out and it will kind of just go on its own. You can use a spatula to help it here. Ugh, are you guys seeing how like airy this is? I should have I should have turned this around the other way so you could see how amazingly airy and just full of holes and awesome bread, gluten-y goodness in here. Once it's on your surface, just basically start working this a little bit. Again, no need. So we're just lightly working this into a ball, <laughs> a ball shape. So, I'm actually doing this a lot for a lot longer than I normally would. I'm just trying to get it so it's, you can see exactly what I'm doing. But basically once it's like this and all of the, the parts where I keep kind of folding under the dough are just sitting on the bottom here. Give it a couple of pats. And the next step is to basically lay a clean, um, clean cotton towel over this, like a cotton dish, dish towel, like a clean one, obviously. I'll just lay it over this for two more hours and we'll be ready to bake. We are back. It has been actually four hours because I had to run some errands, but you can see my dough has expanded quite a bit, which is perfect. Uh, I actually already have the oven going at 450 and you want to just make sure that you preheat the oven, including your cookware, so I'm using a five quart Dutch oven uh, so that both the oven and the cookware are already super hot when you go with this next step. Okay. Now with my dough, you can actually just directly dump this dough into the Dutch oven if you want, but I always find that a little difficult. So I am going to get my hands floured up and then just pick this up and work it a little bit more. Then just upside down, dump it in. And it's fine if it looks all horrible in there. As you can see, because it's all going to be okay once it cooks. Now you just leave that in there for 30 minutes and after 30 minutes we'll take off the lid of the Dutch oven and continue cooking for another 15 minutes and you'll have 
perfect, amazing, crusty bread. Alright guys, I'm back and the bread is out of the oven, so that was a total of 45 minutes cook time, but it is now just cooling here and the cooling part is also critical. Mm, doesn't that look great? Just so you can hear that. Whoops. <laughs> Let me know if you give this a try. It is so easy. You just need yeast, flour, salt, and water. So absolutely awesome. Thanks, guys. See you next time.